Thank you. I would like first to, to say thank you to the Brooklyn Museum and Elizabeth Sackler uh, Center for this opportunity. And I would like also to thank you for your presence here. So, uh, I would like first to say something about the relationship with the feminism in my artworks. I do not explicitly explore the feminist themes in the narrow uh, sense of the term. I don't raise the social cultural context of being a woman. I can neither say my identity as a woman is a direct subject of my work. I could say my identity is a subject of my work and my identity itself consists of womanhood among million others hoods where womanhood is one of the dominant ones. I do explore the general human issues presented by the intimate, and I would say the female sensibility while doing it is obvious. Okay, but then I, I don't see. <laughs> uh, uh, I will speak now about the body involvement in my artworks. Uh, Talamos is a work that I have done at many places and each time it was recreated. The object is made of dough and it is a cast of my body. It is a work about transformation as the one of the butterfly, both in physical and spiritual way. The light intensity is constantly changing, but also the object in the middle. It crushed since it was dried up and lit up wool appeared gradually underneath. In the project Memento Mori, the audience was led to the basement of the museum where in three separate rooms, three separate installations were created exploring the death issue. The first one, you already know this one, I guess, uh, was an installation concentrated on the negative aspect of the death, the fear of the death itself and of the physical decay of the body. It was dark. It is a dark black room and this sound I have been recorded previously. From the darkness of the first installation, the visitor enters the second installation, bridal chamber. As total opposition of the first one, the second room was very bright, fluorescent. I used black light and gave the feeling of floating. The audience has been stepping on the wall. Bridal chamber uh, is upon agnostic myth, myth of a wedding with the death. The third project is remains. There is a text on the marble exploring the verbs that contain the prefix re, making allusions on the process of repetition. The outer light and the one inside the figure have been exchanging constantly. Namely, by the title of the third project, the question of body presentation arose more intense. Although my physical body itself wasn't present in the room, I felt much bigger identification of the body laying in the rooms than with my own body. I felt like my actual body is remains of the art process it itself. What is the remains then? My artwork laying into the space or my real physical body? How to make a portrait of someone that never allowed a portrait of him to be done? In this work, the portrait of Plotinus, I used a citation of Plotinus and projected it on the wall. 
by Plotinus, the embodiment is not adequate representation of the one's character, so I use the female body to make a portrait of Plotinus by creating uh, an ascetic atmosphere into the room. In the funiculus umbilicalis, uh, umbilical cord, a part has been cut out of the body. This bloodless meat incorporates the sense of warmth by the steam that comes out under the organ, leaving some organic liquids. Umbilical cord explores the endless umbilical cord line of the female population, the one we had as potential into our stomach and the one we have been cut uh, off from our mother's stomach. Uh, it is an endless umbilical cord from our mothers, grandmothers, grand-grandmothers made by, by abstraction. Visitors were encouraged to touch the body by the statement set on the plexiglass in front, in front of the table. The warmth of the object gives different connotations, depicts the sensation of an organic living body. It was very important for me to make authentic uh, recording of the pain itself. The installation children committee consisted of non-intensive uh, LED lights all over the space. The visitors lose the feeling of the space since it is total darkness. The sound, subtle, uh, subtle children's voices come from all directions. This was my most abstract work where the body is entirely absent. Absolutely spontaneously, by the invitation of the performer Suzuki Emiko, secret performances started to take place the bodies reappeared. The darkness is disabling the visual sense to some extent, but it is enabling all the other senses, thus opening us more to another world, the world of dream, unconsciousness, unknown, intuitive, intimate. The rational Western thought has been always scared of this approach, staying a part of it as one of the female domains. Due to the dark adaptation, a situation of invisibility for the audience was created. People in the darkness are losing their identity. There is no visual identification nor voice identification if you stay silent. Even the performance can see the shadows only, two-dimensional. Into this dream space, one could explore the self, the new identity, and get rid of the social codes. No sex or racial differences. You could approach the visitor by silently moving and go behind him and explore if she, he could guess your close presence by the little wind, since for him, her, you are invisible. So, uh, this is wonderful creatures. Once upon a time, there were wonderful flying creatures. Their wings were fragile As like you fine gauze. Maybe I should go back once again. Uh, it is installation consisting of a, of a coffin, and it is interactive. When the visitor comes near the coffin, then the, you can hear the text. And the text is actually a very romantic story uh, about some wonderful creatures. And into the coffin there is a hole uh, where it's only an image of the sky. Once upon a time there were wonderful flying creatures. Their wings were fragile like fine gauze. Mm. They shimmered and gleamed in the sunlight whenever they flew. They were admired for their beauty, for the iridescence and brilliance of their color, and for their long slender bodies 
red, green or blue. These wonderful creatures were noted for their swift, darting, soaring motion and for their power of long, sustained flight. So my last work uh, is History of Asexuality. It is an installation a barbershop perceived as an exclusively masculine social space. The space is seen as visually and conceptually opposed, interrelated and combined to the intimate narrative within the stories of four different strands of hair. I explored here the attitude we have towards the strands of hair depending on their ex-owner. There are four different intimate stories. There is a text on each of the photographs, but it is made by purpose so subtle that you can hardly see it because this is not an ad. This is the second story. I wanted to speak about the body engagement into my artwork since for me this unconscious, unconscious process of living and going back to the body, this issue oscillations are really fascinating and constituting my art as feminist. Thank you.